Hi, so in my earlier videos we looked at the dominance of, um, approach and that was where we looked at um, where men are seem to be more dominating in mixed sex convos and they interrupt more and um, parents are seem to be the same towards their children. So that was the dominance effect uh, we looked at. Now we're going to look at the difference approach. Now this is a completely different style of approaching language and gender. Now the aim of this is to say that obviously men are different to women because they belong to different sort of subcategories of people. They have different attitudes, different cultures, different pressures. So that's why they're different. And what it focuses on, it looks at sort of male talk and it looks at female talk. And it kind of says that by looking at these two, we can explain mixed sex conversations. So um, that's basically how it's, it's similar to, for example, Robin Lakoff's women's language um, research, where she came up with 10 points. Women are, uh, seem to be uh, more, for example, they're supposed to be more hesitant. And then from that, she can say, obviously, then in mixed sex conversations, she's more hesitant because her subcategory of people um, is that, whereas men, maybe their subcategory of people would be swearing more. So that's what she was trying to say. And the aim of this is to focus on the linguistic achievements of women and uh, because they usually get forgotten when we look at the dominance effect. And in the dominance effect, there's so much emphasis on the men interrupting, etc., etc., that what we are trying to do is we're trying to avoid um, too much focus on men being dominant because you got to understand in, in terms of the conversation, women are seen to be more cooperative, but the other women, men are seen to be more um, sort of competitive with other men. So obviously when men and women talk, men will still be competitive, women will still be cooperative. So that's the aim of it. So now the full um, study is just going to briefly go over and what they kind of show. So firstly, Jennifer Coates in 1989. Now, um, she's uh, said that women are always cooperative in conversations. They negotiate in discussions, uh, which does not... Uh, do that. They don't really do that in mixed sex conversations. That's what she noticed, that they, they don't really start negotiating and all that. And she said that is to show that men and women are from two different subcategories of people because if women would talk to another woman, she acts in a particular way. She talks to a man. She doesn't negotiate kind of thing. And it can be quite competitive. So she says that, you know, this shows that they're two different types of people. It's like comparing apples and pears. Then Jane... Pilkington, I can never say that, Jane Pilkington, 1992, she agreed, she said women are more collaborative and cooperative and they tend to use uh, more positive and um, politeness strategies, whereas men, they're less complimentary and um, basically they're more like ruder, you could say, and if they like that in each other's conversations, that's what her research showed, so she said it makes sense that it makes sex conversation just the way they act. Yeah, I can never say this name, but uh, Corinne Rad Cooper in 1991, she examined a male rugby team. And what she said is that they're not interested in saving face. What they did is they used insults to kind of express so, uh, solidarity. So they, you know, um, united interest. That's what she tried to, that's what she realized. And she said that, so even if a man and a woman have united interests, the male is likely to insult, whereas a woman is likely to negotiate, use positive politeness. Hence, you can't just complain that men are too dominant or blah, blah, blah. So that was her case she put forward. Then a more controversial case is Deborah Tannen in 1990. She said there is a big male-female miscommunication. And she said that when male and females talk, it's like cross-cultural communication. It's like they're two different species. So obviously, when they talk, it's just so different and exciting, you know, to learn about. The problem is with this, it ignores, like, context. This is what I feel now. Um, it ignores the fact that men were, um, men once subdued women. Women were told to be submissive. That's why some of our history still comes out today 
that women are still a bit more submissive and a bit more shy when they're talking to another man because he is seen as the boss. Women were never. I think history and context is missing from this research. I understand two different types of ways of talking, so when they talk, they'll bring their own. Obviously, it's not the same because men and women, they are different, you know, biologically and as a psychologically. But also, it misses power, and that's tying in with gender. Um, it, it's also this whole dominance, cooperation, and that kind of uh, battle that's going on. It's also to do with who's in power, who's got the professional power, who's influential. It's got to do with the relationships, so the context of that given moment. And some critics say that these um, key linguists, they are making assertions and generalizations on minimal research evidence and therefore it's not valid. So that's just a quick video on what the difference approach is and a recap of the dominance approach. I hope this helps and please visit my blog for further information.